Good morning, my fellow yogic travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. All right, well, uh, for my friends out there who are trying to declutter their life as well as I am, remember how much better you feel when you get rid of stuff. So just chew on that. All right, so it's our journal day. It's a story day. Oh, yes. I love this little Hindu story. You could tell it to a sixth grader and they understand. So there's this boat crossing the Ganges River and there's this pundit, this scholar who's very, very arrogant about what he knows. He's boasting about everything. Oh, my life experience. I've read the Vedas. I've read the Upanishads. And he turns to the boatman who's taking him over and says, so, sir, have you read any of the Holy Scriptures, the Bhagavad Gita, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika? Hmm? He says, no, sir, I am... I, I said, well, then you've wasted most of your life. He turns around and then all of a sudden the ship starts sinking and the boatman turns to him and says, sir, excuse me, the ship is going down. Do you know how to swim? He says, no. He says, well, you've wasted your whole life. So a little Hindu reminder that what good is worldly knowledge if you don't know how to cross the ocean of samsara, of birth and death? So study the scriptures if you want to, but it's more important to have a connection directly to living spirit. All right, my journal question people out there, what stops you from going deeper into your yoga practice? And of course, I use yoga as a metaphor, so it may not be yoga that you're stopping yourself going deep in, deeper into. It might be your art form or your traveling or your opening up to somebody. Whatever it is that stops you from going deeper into that, right? Uh, chew on that and let me know what that is. I'd be, love to discuss it with you and tell you about myself as well. All right, BKSA Angar. First thing I like to do is honor the yoga master and he's always reminding you, your body is your capital, but for most people it's unutilized. So remember, when you're in life, your exhalation is what's going to de-stress you. Your exhalation makes your brain hypotense. Most of us are walking around hypertense. So just think about when you see the person, let's say, on the, on the basketball line, when he's about to take a foul shot, what's the first thing they do? <sighs> take a deep exhale. So let it out. Don't keep it in. Now, James Hellman, one of my favorite uh, archetypal psychologists, reminds us that no family was self-sufficient. No family had to carry the burden of relationship just by the nuclear family. Uh, we've lost a lot of contact with the whole idea of it takes a village you got to spread out the responsibility and very uh, western psychology kind of assumes that the behavioral or personality problems that we have almost always stem from early childhood and yes some of them do but no other culture puts such influ influ uh, influence on the child state even though i've said you know it's apolitical it's disempowered it has a lot of victimy that's separate from the wonder child which i'm not talking about so Think about whether or not you're putting too much emphasis on what happened to you as a child. As Joseph Campbell says, by the time you're 30, 35, you're wearing your own face. you got to take it off your parents and the original primary caregivers. All right, Eric Erickson, as I've been talking about this week, <clears throat> about the stages of growth, the next question that you ask is not only can I trust the world, is it okay to be me, is it okay to move about and act, but can I make it in the world of people and things? This is what's called industry versus inferiority. From 5 to 12, you're learning your new motor skills, you're trying to be individually responsible and good at what you're doing, you get better understanding of cause and effect, moral values, you're managing most of your personal needs and grooming skills really, really well, getting self-confidence from the complex skills that you're learning in school, you're learning how to persevere and complete things, but if you're punished or ridiculed for your efforts, then you can develop feelings of low self-esteem lack of motivation and lethargy and whether or not at a younger age you understand that at some point you're going to have to work and whether your parents give you chores or you learn to uh, work a you know with a paper route or something like that you understand that uh, at some point you're going to have to have a paying job unless you're going to get on the dole or have like a sugar mama or sugar daddy take care of you but uh, that's what's happening from five to twelve reflect on that and see where where you were now ram das my other psychologist who went to the East, uh, he would say, listen, we're into a free fall into the future. It's like jumping out of a plane with no parachute, but there's no earth either. So can you adjust to that free fall? Because we're kind of like ending 
uh, a major historical era of corporate capitalism all over the world and shifting into a more global and compassionate understanding, even if it takes decades to do that, we're part of it. So I always like to say, uh, my heart is breaking. I'm experiencing post-traumatic stress syndrome like everybody else. Our whole country has been on yellow alert since 9-11. Um, it's not the point. The point is some of us still have to carry the light, still try to bear the positive message, give the hope, even in the midst of the chaos. And so uh, I just want to say that as a disclaimer, just because I'm here trying to put out the positive vibe doesn't mean that I'm immune from or don't feel all the other things that I know that we all do. So with that being said, remember, channeling our thoughts, really important. Thought can be constructive or destructive. It's the misuse of it, which most people don't understand. When it can be used for good, most people don't understand how they're hypnotizing themselves. So to all you out there, stay young in the spirit. Never desert your ideals. Continue to celebrate life's wonder. And remember, whatever you look on, you create. You can't look on what you don't want and feel happy. So find out. What do you want? Hang on to that. Create that. Peace be with you.